Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I have a tutorial for you on how to live stream with the Elgato HD60 and OBS, and I'm actually doing it live here. I'm going to show you how to upload to Twitch TV or to MLG in this exact quality. This is what I do every day. I'm going to go over my exact settings and how I get the quality that I get on my live streams and live commentary. So if you want to learn how to do that, please stick around. Also, if you don't happen to have an Elgato HD60, I'm doing a giveaway for an Elgato HD60 here in the video. So you can click the link down in the description and enter to win one for free. OBS is a completely free software. You can download it online. I have the link to that down there in the description as well. So why don't I get you up and started pretty easily. I'm going to kill this last bot here and we are going to skip over to the tutorial part of this video. Once you have OBS installed, go ahead and open it up. It'll look something like this. I've resized mine a little bit, and you can see the scene that I've already made for me to live stream on right here. These are my exact settings, so I'm going to show you what to do next. You right-click in this empty space. Make sure you have Scale to Fit Mode enabled. Enable View and Enable Control Panel. Never do one-to-one -one mode. That's annoying. All of these things just kind of help you make it easier for you to view. What you want to do is right-click in the empty space where we have Scenes. Go to Add Scene. In Add Scene, this little window will pop up, and we're going to name this uh, we're going to name this uh, Sexy HD 60 Tutorial 420. That'll work. <laughs> and now it's completely blank. This works where you have to add sources. The first source that we want to add is obviously our capture card. So we want to go down here and add Video Capture Device, and that's going to bring up a little list here. I'm going to name this one uh, uh, Elgato HD 60. Okay, let's got that one right here, uh, and it has actually automatically selected my Elgato Game Capture HD. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. You can just come to this drop-down menu and click it. If you want to configure it to change your color correction or anything or any of the built-in options, you can do that here, but I highly recommend leaving it alone. We don't need deinterlacing. We don't need any of these options. Leave the resolution default. It's going to pull this resolution directly from the device, so I'd go ahead and leave that alone too. One thing you do want to enable is this little thing that says use buffering milliseconds make sure that this is on and set it to exactly one millisecond this is kind of a secret I got just from Elgato support mm -hmm. don't tell too many people for uh, device audio use audio device leave this alone this will be just fine we don't want to add any sort of delay to this whatsoever no matter what other gu uh, guides will tell you don't add any sort of delay and hit OK and uh, if you want to see it, you can hit Preview Stream. Now, Elgato works kind of funny, like where you uh, can't see what you're working on until you hit Preview. It's going to take just a second to initialize, and then my gameplay will pop up. I'm going to try to leave this up the whole time so that you can see it as we build it, but that's obviously not all that takes to make a live stream. Let's go ahead and add the webcam, too. We right-click, and we go down here to Video Capture Device. This time, let's add a uh, webcam. Oops, I actually typed that in off-screen. Okay. For webcam, uh, it's, already, it's actually selected that one. We want to select the Logitech Webcam C310. That's the one I'm using for this tutorial. My 920 is used elsewhere. We don't need any of these options again. For resolution, you don't really want to put these webcams at maximum. There's no need to stress them. We're going to put the resolution down here at... Uh, 640 by 480 is great, 30 FPS is good, that's about the good size for a webcam, color, space, auto. Uh, we do not want the uh, device M audio, unless you really want to talk through the webcam, if you want to that's okay, but I'm going to show you how to use a different microphone. Hit OK, and that should show up in just a second. Yep, here I am on top. Now, uh, it does it a little bit oddly, so what we're going to have to do is click this button called Edit Scene, and if you'll notice there are these little red lines. Now I can kind of click and drag it around. I'll put mine in the top. I don't want to go that high. I'm going to go top right hand corner. I'm actually going to wiggle my webcam just a little bit. Try to get in a better position, you know, because I'm, I'm making a tutorial and I'm off center here. That's just kind of silly. That's a little bit big, so I'm going to click in the corner and we're going to resize it. It maintains aspect ratio. We're going to make it, uh, let's do it about this big. That looks okay to me. We click Edit Scene when we're done, and it's permanent. But I also had some overlays and some nice things, so I'm going to teach you how to do that too. We're going to go, to go here, and we want to add a static image. And this little box will come up. Let's do like a webcam overlay. That'll be fine. Hit OK. And I'm going to hit Browse and browse through all of my files. You guys need to know where those are. That's for League of Legends. Where is my border at? Here we go, Drifter Frame. This is the one I've got. Okay, we don't need any opacity. You don't really you can do opacity in here. I wouldn't recommend it. I just leave it alone in color key. Go ahead and hit okay. And we go to edit scene again. Make sure that this is on top. It should be. 
you can size it kind of like that. If for whatever reason it's not on top, you can kind of uh, click these buttons and you go to order. And you're going to move down and you can put it behind things if you kind of like this look. Or that just means that the webcam is on top of it. I'll show you how that looks right here. Let's go to edit scene. That's, yeah, it's just keeps the order of what's on top of what. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I prefer the overlay on top. So let's let's go to position size, oh, order. Let's move up. There we go. Undo edit scene. Anything you want to adjust, you can come down and position and size. And we have a lot of different options here. But it's easier usually just to click edit scene and do it easily. But that's not all. So you want art on your stream. You want some sort of branding. Like me, I make tutorials for Elgato and my streams are Brandon. It's fine by me. I really like the company. That's why I work with them. Uh, we click down here and we go to add. And let's go to add image again. We'll do the same thing. And let's go to sexy Elgato brand. Okay. And I'm going to browse my files in the same folder here. I should have... That's Batdog. That's not what I need. Where is my... Where's my Elgato stuff? It's in here somewhere. Um, let's do Elgato White. Okay. Hit OK. And there we are. It's up there in the top right-hand corner. If I want to... I can I leave it huge up there if I want to. If they pay me a lot of money, I'll make it huge. Just a joke. Don't worry about it. Uh, usually a lot of people like to put them under the webcams, kind of like down here. Kind of resize them a little bit like that. Or you can put them down here in this empty space. I'll put mine down here for now. That's, that's actually a pretty good looking space. Hit edit scene and it's done. And that's it for video creation, actually. Your stream is good to go. I'm going to show you some other things in just a second because this isn't all you need. You also need the information on how to encode the video, how to broadcast it, etc., etc. So that's part number two. So we've got this looking good, but now what we want to do is we want to come up here to big settings. These are important. Click on big settings and we'll click right there again to settings and it's going to open up this rather large menu. In general, this is not really important. This is a very important tab here in encoding. Uh, I leave the encoder X264. You can use this NVIDIA thing, but I really highly recommend this one. Always leave your constant bitrate on. Uh, streaming is really CBR. You don't want VBR. Enable the padding. I also have my maximum bitrate set at 34,000. Now, the maximum recommended for both Twitch and MLG, and I think even Hitbox, is 3,500. 30, 3,500. I do 3,400. This is what I'm comfortable with. This is where I've got the best results. You can put 20,000 in here if you want to. You can put whatever number your internet will handle. This, These are my best results right here at 3,400. This is what works best for me. And you can put a custom buffer size if you want to, but I always, even before this was an automatic, I matched the buffer to whatever my bitrate was. Uh, audio codec, AAC, 48 kilohertz, 128 stereo. These you want to leave the same. This is good. We want to come down here to broadcast settings. I actually had the only do mine in live stream. Yeah, so make sure it's in live stream mode. I live stream on Twitch. We'll just leave it right there. You will need to input your stream key. In order to get that, you need to go to twitch.tv and go to your dashboard and view your stream key and paste it in. I'm actually not even going to remotely show that here or the pasting in because it's a very private thing you want to keep hidden. All of these are pretty much best left default. Just leave them completely alone. Your file path here is something interesting you can do. Like if you want to do file output only, you can change that to FLV or .mp4. Uh, for streaming, FLV is really good, the way to go, so we'll just do that. Uh, let's go, I don't know, bad dog. There we go, swapped it back over to FLV mode, and we're good to go. Make sure you put in your stream key before you connect. You go ahead and hit apply. In the video section, you can use either your processor or your graphics card. I have my graphics card right here. I'd highly recommend that. For your base resolution, I highly recommend 10, 1920 by 1080. That's 1080p for the Elgato HD60. The closer you match it to source, the less delay it has. And we all know that there's a some delay associated with live streaming, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. Uh, I don't do downscaling resolutions. Uh, FPS, you can either do 30 or 60. I have it on 30. You can also do 60. My PC struggles a little bit with 60 for whatever reason. If you've got a better PC than me and you can do 60, I would recommend 60. Either way, it's not a very big deal. Audio is actually a very, very important tab. You want to select whatever microphone you're going to be using right here. You can select, I use my Razer Siren microphone. It's a denser microphone. It has great volume, so I, I select that one. If I wanted to use my webcam microphone or my headset or whatever, I could select that. We've got that. And now the interesting thing is you can also choose whatever desktop audio device you have. And that's why I like OBS, because it outputs also the audio straight from your desktop PC. So if you're on Skype, if you're on TeamSpeak, if you have something going on in the background, your audience will be able to 
hear it. But I play with headphones, as you've seen earlier. I have my Astro Mix Amp hooked up to the computer, and I can either select my basic uh, Realtek audio output, that's these are, or my speakers for the computer, these are just standard sort of options, or I can select the headset earphone here on the Astro Mix Amp Pro. That means any noise that goes through my Astro Mix Amp, anything I'm listening to, you can also hear. And I have my Skype or my TeamSpeak set up to go out through the Mix Amp so you'll hear whoever I'm talking with, and that's a very, very important thing. I wouldn't worry with hotkeys too much, uh, not much in the advanced tab you really need to play with. Most of this is very good just on its own, and the uh, microphone noise gate, if you're in a noisy background, if you have a fan going, loud roommates or whatever, you can play with this, but generally speaking, I didn't need it at all. So once that's all set up here, you can go ahead and hit OK. Perhaps the final thing you need to know is that the Elgato HD60 has some delay when you're streaming live. Your live stream won't necessarily sync up with your voice perfectly. The delay is usually somewhere between 400 milliseconds and up to 2 seconds. Most of the time I find people between 4 to 800 milliseconds. And the settings I showed you are designed to absolutely minimize the delay as much as possible so that if you want to stream with your friends on Skype, all you do is hop on the call. It's automatically going to pick up the audio. Everything's going to be fine. Now you can, in OBS, delay your webcam and delay your voice and delay everything to perfectly sync with OB with uh, your gameplay, but you can't delay your friend's voice without virtual audio cables. That can be a little frustrating. I don't know. I've got some very meta gameplay I'm recording here. I like recording my recording software. But if the delay is minimal, like the way I set it up to be, and I'm getting killed by bots, this is kind of embarrassing, then you can essentially ignore it. A 400 millisecond delay is one that you won't really notice at all, and it's much better to have clear voices and a normal flow of chat than it is to have your reactions absolutely perfectly synced with the gameplay. And have you ever seen my live streams? If it's not a problem there, it won't be a problem for anything else. Man, my aim is off today on this weird sort of recording that I've got going on. That's almost it for the tutorial. All you need to do is stop the preview. You can't broadcast while you're previewing. That'd be a little bit strange. And when you're ready to go live, you just come over here. It's stopping the preview right now. You just click on Start Streaming, and it's going to be good to go. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to start streaming. But once you've got all that set up, once you start streaming, it is good to go. Well, guys, that's all for the tutorial today. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And don't forget there is an Elgato HD60 giveaway down there in the description. I do hope you enter. I'm giving it away completely for free. And uh, that's about it. Good luck streaming, everybody. Drifter out.